hi everyone and welcome to my next video tutorial which is going to be focused on utilizing the Django browser reload library and this is a very effective library because what it does is it automatically refreshes your browser when you make changes to Python code to your templates or even your static files so it's very useful and very helpful to help to improve your whole development workflow when you're working with Django so the first thing that you need to ensure that you have set up is that you have a Django project to which you want to apply this to and as soon as we have that in place let's go on ahead and get started. All right so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and set up Django browser reload. Okay so as you can see here we have the documentation to look into. There are a few requirements here so do keep in mind the following requirements as we go on ahead and set everything up. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and install this particular library. So I'm just going to say pip install and then Django browser reload. So let's do that. So I'll stop my server and I'll say pip install Django browser reload. So we want to install that library within our application. Do we go? Perfect. All right, then the next thing we need to ensure is that we have django.contrib.static files in our installed apps. So let's go on ahead and take a look. So if we go to our application settings.py file, we can see here if we scroll down, okay, there we have it, django.contrib.static file. So usually this will be present if you are using a newer version of Django or newish, should I rather say. Okay, so that's fine. Then we want to add the Django browser reload library to our installed apps. So here we have it here, we can copy that. And I'm just gonna add this at the end of my list, just like that. Okay, so make sure you've added that in. Okay, next. The next thing we wanna do is we want to add in the necessary app URL in our main or root URL configuration file. And this is the following that we need to add in. So let's head on over to our main urls.py file. And just ensure that you have the include function here being passed. I have it set up for my URLs in my app file. Okay, so we can go ahead then and copy the following. And you can paste that in. There we go. So we have that included now. So make sure you have that set up. Okay, and what you can also do is you can also use another prefix if you desire. It's really up to you. The next thing we want to do is we want to add in the middleware. So I like to always um, add in the middleware at the bottom in case there's any um, requirements or anything of the such. And as you can see here, we have a requirement here that we need to add in the middleware after anything in regards to GSIP middleware. So there are a few things to keep in mind. So I'm going to copy the following. And let's go to middleware and I'm going to add it right at the end here. There we go. So here we have Django browser reload. So it's now good to go. And there we have it. All right, so that is the main way in which you can go ahead and install this library. Now, there are additional ways in which you can go ahead and set this up. I will dive into that briefly near the end of the video. So do keep that in mind. Okay, so we have that set up now. The only other thing that you want to make sure now is that when we are debugging this, debug needs to be set to true. Okay, so if we go to uh, debug here, we are in testing. So this is a library good for testing and development as I mentioned earlier on. Okay, so we have everything set up as we needed. So now we can go ahead and actually do some testing. All right, now to fully enact the recently installed library, which is Django Browser Reload, what you want to do is just go on ahead and start your server. So here, I am going to stop my server. If you already have your server um, on and it's started in this following state, what you wanna do is you just wanna stop your server and then you want to restart it. This is just to prompt the Django browser reload listener. Okay, so sometimes you may see it here starting. Okay, all right, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and perform our tests. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with templates. So 
as we can see, I have my application here up and running. I have my login page, my register page, and my home page. Let's say I want to change something here. And the way that I like to describe Django Browser Reload is it's kind of very similar to Flutter with the hot reload functionality. So you're going to see a change occur almost instantaneously as you go ahead and type it in the designated area. So it's very similar to it in that regard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move everything side by side. So first of all, I want to go to my applications index.html file. And I'm going to move this to the right and put my application here on the left. Okay, so let's move this here. And here I have project X. So what I'm going to do is as soon as I start making changes here, the listener from Django Browser Reload which is integrated as part of our application is going to pick up that change and our browser here is automatically going to be reloaded. So I'm going to start changing this just to X. And you can see there the browser automatically reloaded. If I just go ahead and say Eden X and just leave it, the browser automatically reloads and it picks up that change. Okay. And essentially, if I were to compare now with the terminal itself, we can see those requests were being um, retrieved with the get request just by changing everything in our template. So now let's compare the other way around. Let's now go ahead and compare our code with the requests that are being sent here. So let me make a change. Our browser reloaded and we can see this request here went on ahead and instantiated itself. Let's move this to project X. And there we go, that request was sent there. Okay, so now you can see in action here how these requests are being sent automatically. Okay, so that is how we can utilize this on the template site. So what I want to do now is I just want to move everything back to its previous state, and there we have it. Okay, so that is for templates. So let's close this. Now what we want to do is we want to evaluate now for our static files. So let's go and do that. So in my application, I have a CSS file called styles.css, and this applies to the message text and the form layout. So message text is based on um, the notification uh, font color and the form layout is of course based on if we go to register it's based on the following form here so the properties that have been applied here css wise to creating your account here we can see that the layout is set to border radius 15 pixels here and width 500 pixels so Let's go ahead and do the same thing. So I'm going to switch the widths here from 500 pixels and I'm going to double it. All right, so when it comes to your static file, so for example, your CSS files here, what I reckon you do is whenever you are, of course, changing your properties here, I'd recommend that, of course, you just save um, your code here in CSS, okay? There are times when you just need to save it once and then of course the listener for the library is going to activate itself, but that's just something I'd recommend that you do each time here specifically. All right, so I use of course Control S to save my file, but um, just make sure you do that. So when we alter this now, I'm gonna put in a thousand, save my file, go back, and we can now see that the width here has extended. Now, let me go on ahead and put this back to 500. Okay, and it goes back to where it is. And let me put this to 250. Okay, it goes even smaller. So in my experience here, as long as you just save once, it should kick in the listener, so you don't need to do it every time. So as of now, all I'm doing is I'm just typing it literally and not saving the file. So just something to keep in mind. So let me put this to 750. And as you can see, it automatically reloads for us. We don't have to make any changes or anything of the like. Now I want to alter the border radius here. I want to make it a lot more curved, you could say. So I'll set this to 55. 
bit and we can see it's a lot more curved around the edges and you can see this is all done automatically now when it comes to caching your css files so what can sometimes happen is let me just first of all put this back to what it was and there we go now what can sometimes happen is the first time that you attempt to change your properties here in your static files from what i've noticed here if you just change um, your settings here it can not reflect here even after saving your file initially and kickstarting that listener so what you can do as well is go to your browser settings in google chrome go to more tools developer tools and then right click on the following icon empty cache on hard reload right click and hard reload now you don't need to do this every time you just need to do this once and of course it's going to buy you quite a lot of time with um, the caching here that's been cleared and that should then go on ahead and resolve if you're unable to have any automatic reloads here so do keep that in mind here if you run into this issue so that is something that i did figure out while i was testing some things okay right so that is static files all right now the next thing i want to show you how we can apply this django browser reload is to python code now it's not going to be as demonstrative visually speaking i mean with templates and static files it's a lot more visual but with the python code it's not as much but i will show you an example here of how this is going to work automatically refreshing changes browser site so what i'm going to do is i'm going to close this up and I'm going to go to my applications views.py file. And what I'm going to do now is just log into my application here. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Let's, okay. okay, so in my application here, uh, this is on my dashboard. So I have a dashboard view. You can find it. So here in my dashboard view, if I just zoom out here, I have a record object and I am obtaining all of the objects in records and I am obtaining, I'm setting up it with a context dictionary and that's being passed to my dashboard.html file. So hence here on the dashboard, you can see the record. So I only have one record here. Now in regards to Python code and automatically refreshing your browser on changes. So let's say for example, I just remove the context dictionary here that's being assigned which is going to output and loop through all of the record objects that's being displayed here on my dashboard you're going to see immediately it will take effect so i'm just going to remove this just remove it go back okay and what i'm going to have to do is head on back and just save this file and you can see it's now gone okay so again here with the python code okay we are going to have to save. So if I go back, okay, we can see here that nothing is happening. So you need to make sure that you save your file. And there we go, automatically, you can see it's going to take that change into regard and it's going to reload the page. So you need to make sure here that you reload, that you save when you make these changes. Okay, so again, also with the static files, make sure you save your file and then it's going to go on ahead and reflect those changes for you here, as we can see. Okay, so that's just an example of how you can reload Python code. So again, it's not as obvious in all regards because you need to have data that you're outputting that's linked to your models in the back end, and that's usually the best way. But this can be helpful if you are referring to other models that you're working with or multiple models that are going to be loaded on a particular web page and you make changes to that it's going to appear here automatically okay so there we have it that is how you can utilize django browser reload i find it to be very useful especially when i'm making changes with the templates and static files so it's definitely a library that i recommend that you look into okay now as you can see here, another thing I wanted to mention is we added in the middleware, which gives us the ability to kind of utilize a sort of hot reload sort of functionality in kind of a way where it's automatically going to load 
the browser, refresh the reload the browser, and we'll be able to see the changes that we've made in our application. Now, how this works is the middleware is going to insert a script tag, for example, on the HTML responses before a body tag, if of course we have one. So that's how it is done. And we just have middleware to do that for us. Now you can also do this a, in a more manual way. You can also use template tags as well. So here, for example, we're loading Django Brother Reload. And then here we are adding in the reload script. So that is something that you can also do directly. If for example, you just want to use the template tag and you want this script to be on certain pages, you don't want it to be on all of your templates or anything of the like. You don't want it to be applied to your entire application. So for example, if I only want this to be applied to my dashboard and my index.html page, I can use the following tags here to ensure that everything is reloaded automatically and I don't have this middleware. So you can treat this middleware as site-wide. So if you want, um, of course, this Django Browser Reload to be enacted, for example, to all of your templates and to your whole um, application, should I say, but if you want to narrow the scope, specifically in a template fashion here, you can just use the tags independently without having to utilize the how can I say the middleware? So it's really up to you if you want to do it everywhere or if only certain pages. Okay. All right, guys. So that's it for this video tutorial. That's how you can utilize Django Browser Reload. So as always, thank you for the support and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.